训练将比照配件，也由二豪来负责。还有什么问题吗？ 这是我们阵营期间队南配线队队长韩明。那好，接下来就交给你们了。嗯，哎，来吧，咱们来训练吧。我不太清楚他们的状况，所以还是按照平常训练的方式吧。So there's something a little bit right and a little bit wrong with what he just said about making the Epe and Foil teams practice roughly in the same style as Saber. The thing is, Foil and Epe have different rules for Saber. Foil has very similar rules for Saber, but it is still pretty different. Basically, all of them are different enough that most people, especially nowadays, will specialize in one so that they can become very intimately familiar with how that weapon is um, most successfully fenced. The thing is, the general styles of a lot of different fencers, regardless of what weapon they are fencing, usually come from the certain types of rules, particularly Epe and Saber. Foil is fairly versatile, there's probably the widest range of styles, but with Saber and Epe, while there are, you know, a lot of different ways to fence them, because of the way that they're set up, there are a couple of like very general ways of doing them that are definitely the most common. So the way that this is right is that there are things that each weapon can sort of borrow from another that sometimes people don't really realize if they don't spend enough time on multiple weapons. So this is sort of my personal opinion, but I believe that, you know, for example, Epe fencers, if they take foil, they can learn a lot of the more back and forth and intricate blade work that foilists need to learn how to do because of their light weapon and because of their rules. So while it's not fully transferable, it is something that they can take advantage of. And if an Epe Fencer were to take Saber, they would learn how to become very aggressive, they would have very good footwork, and stuff like that. Now, I'm not saying that Epe Fencers don't have good footwork, but it's a pretty well-known fact that Saber Fencers usually have pretty much the best footwork, or at the very least, the best training 
for footwork because a lot of what saber fencers do relies on that. And epee fencing is sort of the opposite. It's the slowest one. That's just some examples of what one weapon could borrow from the others. And there are numerous examples from, you know, all sorts of stuff like you know, saber fencers can learn a lot from Epe about certain things like uh, counterattacks, targeting the wrist. Also, you know, just there's all sorts of examples of weapons being fenced in certain ways because they were specifically influenced by other weapons, regardless of the rule differences. So, you know, it's not it's not a perfect transference. You know, a saber fencer could not win by fencing just the way that an epee fencer does. There are some, you know, certain things that they would have to adopt and modify so that it works within whatever weapon they're doing. But, you know, it is possible, and a lot of people do recommend it. You know, sort of a bit of cross-training with the other weapons so that, you know, they can pick up something that is useful and apply it to their own weapon. And especially if they're then up against someone who has not done that, they may gain an advantage. So that's the part of it that's correct. The part of it that's not is, like I just said, it, you know, it's it can only be done like in small parts, you know, really everything in moderation. And it's something that has to be like even the things that you do take from a different weapon, you have to modify and adjust so that it works. It's not something that is, you know, just take one weapon and fence it as if you're doing another weapon and you'll win. It's not as simple as that. It's just, you know, you turn yourself into a melting pot so that you gain all sorts of advantages from all sorts of different sources, the other two weapons being amongst them. So, what they said is true, and it happens, and a lot of people recommend it. The thing is, though, they kind of went too overboard with it, especially having the foil and epee teams being coached by a saber fencer. That's not impossible, but it's usually done if you don't have another choice. And in this case, there's no reason to do it. Granted, we don't know much about the different teams, but if they've gotten as far as they are now, like in a previous episode, they said that their foil and epee teams are already good. It's their saber team that is suffering. So it doesn't make sense to have your best saber fencer start to coach the epee and foil teams, especially if you've already established that, you know, they're all good. They're really just going overboard with this sort of advice. So, you know, if you take what they said and you knock off like, you know, 50% of the amount of effort that they're doing, then it's actually good advice. <laughs> Well, that's the end of that. Nothing much really happened. There was really no fencing at all, other than flashbacks, which I didn't include. I'm not going to give this one a score. I guess we'll just have to wait for next week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye.